Hello everyone, we are already in the second week of the course, the impact of cultural heritage, and this week's lecture will be about cultural heritage and local communities. In today's lecture, we will be talking about the link between the local community and cultural heritage and how this understanding have been developed and shaped through the years. Uh, also, we will have a clue how cultural heritage projects can be much more than uh, just preserving and protecting artifacts and sites of the past, but uh, projects to enhance local heritage potential, to re-energize neglected areas and provide opportunities for local people to review, re-engage with the reinterpreted heritage. Let's start with some definitions, uh, general de definitions regarding community and their position and role in the socio-economic and cultural chain. So in one of the general definitions, a local community has been defined as a group of interacting people living in a common location. Uh, the word community is often used to refer to a group that is organized around common values and it is uh, uh, attributed with the social cohesion within a shared geographical location, generally in a social unit larger than a household. Uh, it can also refer to the national community or the global community. Uh, the word community itself uh, is derived from the old French word, which is derived from the Latin word communitas, a broad term for fellowship or organized society. Another definition could be also um, describing what is community is a social group of any size whose member uh, reside in a specific locality, share uh, governmental and often have a common cultural and historical heritage. Because communities can align along many factors such as location, identity, interest or organization, you, me, we may already belong to several without even realizing that. Some common examples are like neighbors, uh, faith uh, organizations, hobby focused clubs, uh, co-worker uh, working space, um, volunteering space. Um, it could be uh, shaped or it could be formed in many uh, um, aspects. On another note, and as we defined last week, cultural heritage refers to cultural sites, monument, folklore, traditional activities, practices, languages, costumes, artistic expressions, values, etc. that are considered vital to be preserved for future generations. Cultural heritage gives people a connection uh, to be certain social values, beliefs, religious and Customs. It also allows them to identify with others uh, with similar backgrounds. So, as we can see, uh, cultural heritage gives people a sense of unity and belonging within a group and allows them to better understand previous uh, generations and uh, the history of where they come from. But why communities need to be empowered? As stated by some scholars, communities have a wealth of knowledge and assets within themselves, which if understood and nurtured by uh, practitioners and policymakers, has the potential to strengthen uh, resilience and enable prevention focused public services. A powerful community is not simply one that is consulted, engaged or involved in decision-making processes on other people's terms. It is a community that plays a strong role in shaping its own future on its own terms. And for that to happen, a number of factors need to be uh, considered and discussed. Studies and examples over the years prove that community power works because people who, who um, know and love their communities are more likely to know what is better for these communities more than the people in offices miles away. Uh, and 
being part of an empowered community has separate and different um, benefits from different layers such as uh, it, a support uh, network, uh, professional development, sense of belonging, um, empowered in decision making, um, and new inspirations and ideas uh, and also a greater uh, resilience. Uh, local heritage. What is local heritage? A place or an object uh, may be considered to have a local heritage value if it meets one or more of the uh, following criteria. Display historical, economic or social themes that are uh, of important to local area, uh, represent customs or ways of uh, life that are characteristic uh, of the local area, um, has played an important part in the lives of local residents, display design characteristics or construction techniques of significance to the local area, may be associated with a notable uh, local personality or event or even um, a notable uh, landmark in that uh, local area. Heritage sites and buildings can have very positive influence on many aspects uh, of the way of a community develops. Regeneration, housing, education, economic growth and community engagement are examples of the ways in which heritage can make a very positive contribution to the community. And uh, I will be giving some examples uh, in the coming slide. But in general, how and in which aspects we can attest that contribution. For example, the historical environment is a proven source of uh, benefit to local economics, particularly but not uh, only uh, through tourism, for example, and that uh, in the coming weeks we will be talking about that in details. Uh, environment and development studies had proved that uh, adaptive reuse of heritage building is an important factor in creating sustainable communities. Moreover, the heritage uh, places are an excellent local educational resources. Learning about the history of a place is a good way of bringing communities together through a, short, a shared understanding of the unique cultural identity heritage places gives to uh, an area. Uh, and also this topic, we will be talking about it in details uh, in the coming weeks. Now, all of the aforementioned is great, but it wasn't the case from the beginning. Last week, we talked about the timeline of UNESCO's convention and how the term and concept have been uh, developed parallel with the needs of the different social and economic faces. Over the last two decades, UNESCO and the World Heritage Committee have increasingly recognized that local people and their communities are to be uh, included in the overall initiatives and uh, implementations of UNESCO heritage sites. And, it is recog uh, and this recognition came after critics regarding the lack of attention to local communities in heritage conservation. So, for example, the UNESCO uh, 2003 Convention on Intangible Cultural Heritage was committed to emphasizing the role of local communities for collaborative and sustainable heritage conservation. Several scholars have noted that UNESCO has engaged with the idea of local communities in heritage preservation for a number of years, but without putting the priority of local community into practice. Uh, there are a number of challenges to involving local communities as stakeholders in heritage management. For instance, a large heritage site may include several community groups and uh, protecting the rights of one group may neglect the right of other group. Scholars like Deacon and Smith argue that in the heritage designation process, local communities are unlikely to participate in the ultimate decisions of heritage management, even though the authenticity and cultural importance of heritage site often re resets uh, with that local community. Now, one of the important uh, conventions has really huge impact and role 
is the Council of Europe's Framework Convention on the Value of Cultural Heritage for the Society, known as FARO Convention 2005, aims to the recognition of people's uh, right to enjoy their own cultural heritage according to a sustainable development approach. Uh, the FARO Convention defines heritage communities as a group of people who value specific aspects of cultural heritage with uh, um, with the way they wish within the framework of public action to sustain and transmit to future generations. Hence, they are actively embedded in a more and more uh, articulated process of enhancement of all those instruments provided for the safeguard of cultural heritage in all its forms, intangible but also tangible. One of the reasons why FARO Convention could be considered as a very innovative document is the transition that they uh, that it marks after uh, UNESCO Convention for the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage between uh, conservation of cultural heritage and uh, it is uh, valorization and uh, promotion according to this new approach, local communities are called on uh, play a uh, primary role in the activation of territorial empowerment process. Uh, this means that all the members in the community are no more considered as simple consumers of the uh, patrimony in their territory. On the contrary, they became as divine suggest shareholders and stakeholders, not just because they are direct or indirect owners of the heritage uh, itself, but also because their uh, personal and collective interest in its management is stronger than the one expressed by every other uh, stakeholder. In this slide, I will be talking about the incredible example of how cultural heritage contributed in the development uh, and well-being of local community and vice versa, how local community can contribute in the preservation uh, of the um, uh, of the world of the historical uh, site and transfer it to the next generation. The archaeological park of Herculaneum, which is a world heritage site with the region of Pompeii and Torre uh, Anzinata in Naples, Italy. The territory of the city of Herculano or Herculaneum is a geological, environmental and cultural heritage declared of the significant public interest. About two thirds of the territory are included in the perimeter of the Vesuvius National Park. Moreover, numerous ministerial uh, measures identified many archaeological sites within the territory, including the Roman city of Herculaneum, uh, buried uh, by the ashes of the Vesuvius vo uh, volcano in, uh, 78, uh, in the year 78 after dating. Until the 80s, um, terms like uh, maintenance, uh, uh, um, excavation, conservation, uh, were usually local uh, people uh, approached and the site had contributed to the well-being of the local community. But by the end of the 20th century, the site was physically and uh, visually cut off from the local community who were experiencing extreme social dis disadvantages and rising crime rates uh, a series of factors, including uh, demands for opening tendering in the public sector, accelerated the divorce. Then, in 2001, Herculaneum Conservation Project was initiated as a flexible public-private model to tackle chronic uh, conservation and management issues. It went on a trail approach that could be adopted by the public partner in long term. An operative um, team uh, permanently on site for two decades has uh, meant that solutions have responded to the specific needs of the heritage place and it is stakeholders. Uh, collaboration with the local and national actors has uh, seen the archaeological site linked back into the historic and natural landscape and has enabled uh, participation from the local community associations, international organizations and other non-heritage actors.
and this project and it has uh, many uh, layers of impacts or aspect of impacts uh, on the social level heritage related uh, initiatives have played a key role in building social inclusion and reinforcing the local capacity such as the role of local community actors in urban regeneration in, near uh, by the site on the economic level the success of uh, public private partnership uh, promoted the creation of the um, long-term public uh, heritage authority moving uh, decision making nearer to the problems this enabled direct control over ticket income and the free uh, region uh, over new forms of partnerships on the environmental level the decay that led to two-thirds of the site being closed has been addressed a direct consequence of a more comprehensive management approach which included uh, the setting abandoned agricultural and urban areas around the site have been reclaimed so as we can see heritage uh, properties have the potential to enhance quality of life and well-being of stakeholders and to elevate poverty and enhance sustainable livelihoods of uh, local communities. What role can the community play in protecting cultural heritage? It is worth pointing out is the historic experience of many communities living in or around antiquity sites in the 19th and 18th century like Luxor in, or, and Aswan in Egypt or Palmyra and Wasra in Syria or Jerash in Jordan or many other places community lived in or on top of this monument with the de development of archaeology, uh, site management and tourism, most of uh, those communities were removed, uh, often uh, forcibly removed, in order to preserve sites or to make them uh, more attractive to visitors. Such me measures have often led to uh, friction in the relationship uh, uh, with the central uh, government who were then seen as uh, detracting from the interest of the local community rather than protecting or supporting their interest. For these and other reasons, many communities have continued to, to be barred from cultural heritage sites so as not to deter um, visitors. Thus, it is a big task to re-engage these uh, same communities with the with, with these heritage sites because as we mentioned earlier in this uh, presentation uh, they know better how to develop and preserve this heritage but policies can empower uh, that also uh, through many tools uh, for example teaching uh, or educating kids uh, children youth to practice uh, the traditional know-how increasing uh, and spreading awareness about uh, monument and their importance practicing and participation in uh, association that fund workshops and uh, museum which can help to educate others about cultural heritage uh, developing a curriculum to give cultural heritage education in schools formally and informally involving community-based research on the preservation of a cultural heritage also collecting and disseminating information about cultural heritage through media, um, newspapers, uh, and uh, new and modern uh, channels. So, uh, as we are coming to the end of the lecture, we can see and attest the shift of the heritage concept implementation and easily sense the modern understanding of cultural heritage, uh, which gives more prominent role to local community. Implement, uh, implementation uh, for heritage uh, organizations, uh, professionals and local community need uh, to follow some uh, objectives or to follow some uh, methods or rules uh, to, to meet this uh, local community approach. Uh, for example, people must have the first priority in cultural heritage, not objects. A holistic understanding of the heritage and is, is the only way forward to take the complexity of heritage into account. 
Communication in connection with cultural heritage need to take into account a comprehensive understanding of what communication today is rather than systematic um, approach. Heritage projects need uh, interdisciplinary um, teams with a diverse significance uh, and work-related backgrounds. Actors and affected people in cultural heritage need a flexible mindset rather than a rigid, liner, step-by-step -step approach. So as we can see, the modern understanding needs different actors, different mindset, different skills, and most important, a different attitude to active uh, cultural heritage uh, for the benefit of all. So these are the references uh, I used for uh, the preparation of this uh, presentation. You can see them also uploaded on uh, the classroom, uh, second uh, week materials. Um, I can conclude the lecture uh, stating that uh, areas where the heritage is understood and valued tend to be better looked after than those where heritage items have no link with the community. Such links help to foster civic responsibility and citizenship and contribute to everyone's quality of life, whether in well-being or job creation or even other aspects. Uh, so, till next week with other topics to discover cultural heritage and climate change. Thank you so much.